Welcome to the Small School District Association's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're excited to have you. Uh, before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. Our presenters will be giving very short six minute overviews of their schools. Uh, so we're sure that our attendees probably will have some questions for our presenters. So to ask those questions, please do utilize that Q&A feature. You can ask a question to a specific panelist, or you can ask a general question to any and all of the panelists. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there is one other block of sessions today. So if you haven't signed up for that, please do feel free to do so. And about one week from today, a recording of the session will be available on that same registration website. I'd like to go ahead and hand it over to our first presenter, which will be the new School of Architecture and Design. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen really quickly here. My name is uh, Raul Moreno. I work with the New School of Architecture and Design uh, based out of San Diego, California. And I would be the designated college representative to help out with any admissions questions, enrollment, financial aid, you name it. And uh, just to give all of you a, a brief intro into our campus, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are located in San Diego, California. For those of you that have been, we're about uh, close to two hours from Los Angeles, California and about 15 minutes from the Mexican border. And uh, my first slide is just really quickly what's going on with our campus. Uh, right now we're closely monitoring the situation with COVID. We do plan to open the campus uh, by fall 2021 and uh, maybe have some hybrid courses during the summertime. So if you want more information on what's going on with the campus, you can click on the link down there at the bottom and uh, or visit the link and find out more about what's going on with our campus uh, during the summer and fall. Now I get to the exciting stuff. So uh, we are celebrating our 40th anniversary at New School of Architecture and Design. And we're uh, really happy that we're able to be around for you know, over 40 years now. And we actually started off in Chula Vista, California, and then moved to downtown San Diego a little bit over 20 years ago. Uh, we haven't had a chance to have a, a formal celebration, but we are planning to have you know, a great celebration to celebrate those 40 years of being uh, within the world of design, architecture, and construction management. So uh, very proud of, of being able to, to celebrate that uh, you know, phenomenal feat. Now, I do wanna uh, definitely talk about the different programs that we offer, but first I do wanna talk about just some of our, our foundational uh, information uh, founded back in the early 80s. Uh, we started off, like I said, in Chula Vista, California. We're located in the design district of downtown San Diego. For those of you that are familiar with San Diego, we're about 10 minutes away from SeaWorld. Uh, we're about five minutes away from Balboa Park and the San Diego Zoo, actually closer to uh, Petco Park where the baseball stadium is. So we're walking distance to all the really great areas of downtown San Diego in the East Village, uh, walking distance to Petco Park, uh, to the Gas Lamp District, and also even the Convention Center, even that's a little bit of a farther walk, but you know, if you wanna walk a, you know, a couple of miles, it's definitely, uh, not too far away. Uh, we are a regionally accredited university through WASC, and we also have National Architectural Board programmatic accreditation for those of you that are seeking architecture licensure and certification. Now, the uh, programs that we offer at New School uh, revolve around undergraduate and graduate programs. Um, our largest program is our undergraduate architecture program. You'll notice that there's two different variations of those programs. We have the four-year Bachelor of Arts in Architecture, and then we have the five-year professional degree, which is our Bachelor of Architecture degree program. On the design side, we have undergraduate degrees in product design, uh, graphic design, interactive media, and then we have our bachelor's degree in interior architecture and design. And those are all four-year degrees. Uh, the only five-year undergraduate degree that we have would be our professional degree in architecture, which is located there on the left on the slide. And then also we do offer um, undergraduate degrees in construction management for those of you that are interested in project management, project engineering and overseeing you know, small and large construction projects. Uh, in addition to that, we do have our graduate programs. Uh, those are going to be on the architecture level and then also um, on the construction management level, which is the only uh, online program that we offer at our campus, which is the uh, Master of Construction Management. And that can be done in uh, a year or less sometimes. 
Uh, you'll notice also that there's some minors that we offer. So with all of our undergraduate degrees, we offer minors in various areas like healthy urbanism, uh, interior design, if you wanted to mix and match between architecture and interior design or vice versa. And then we also have uh, our popular degrees like graphic design, interactive media and product design. Uh, I, I wish I could show all of you a lot of different projects and that might be you know, for another conversation, but this is definitely one of our pride and joy projects in downtown San Diego. This was done by some of our graduate architecture and construction management students. This is a, a pocket park that's in downtown San Diego uh, called the Courtyard. And it's a, a really great project because uh, it definitely brought the community to life. Uh, I actually got to work with these guys a little bit when they were actually putting the uh, project into play. And uh, what the courtyard is, it's, it's a downtown pocket park. It's got, it's got a dog park. It's got a, a concert and events venue for live music and concerts and events. Uh, it's got a bar. It's got a place for food trucks to park so they can have different types of you know, food because we all love our, you know, our, our dinner and lunches and, and snacks. And then it's got an open marketplace in the middle uh, to host different types of events. And I know in the past we've hosted everything from events for the Rock and Roll Marath Marathon in San Diego all the way to uh, pet adoption events, as well as even done some side of events for Comic-Con uh, during the time when the event is in, in downtown San Diego. So it's a really great, great place for the community to come together and uh, even just have lunch during the week. And it's all uh, created with recycled shipping containers. So uh, it's actually a really great sustainable and a perfect example of green construction and design. So a little bit about the courtyard. Hopefully you guys can come down and visit it sometime. As far as our campus goes, it's a very hands-on campus. We have everything from fabrication shops to studio spaces. And uh, it's a, a, a small campus, but we actually have a lot of different areas for you to be able to do different types of projects. So it's a really great place to be able to, to create and design and also uh, be able to uh, create miniature models all the way to uh, create some really great renderings and designs, depending on which, whichever program you're associated with. And then financial aid and scholarships, you're probably wondering how you know, you're going to pay for all of this. So uh, typical things are your FAFSA, but then take a look at the scholarships down there that we offer. Everything from merit awards to early action scholarships, opportunity awards. And you can always connect with our financial aid department. They can tell you about different ways to be able to finance your education, um, as well as you know, grants that are available. We have uh, yellow ribbon programs and military education benefits for those that are part of military families or are in the military. So a little bit about financial aid. And then uh, last but not least, our admissions checklist. What we're looking for is a 2.5 GPA or higher college essay and many different uh, uh, admissions requirements as, as far as a uh, you know, college essay uh, and then also your statement of purpose and portfolio if you're looking for advanced studio placement. So thank you all for, for your time today and I'll pass it on to the next speaker. Thank you very much, New School of Architecture and Design. Um, and to anybody who just recently joined us, uh, just a reminder to ask questions to any of the panelists, please do feel free to utilize that Q&A feature. But up next is the Bell Ray Institute of Animal Technology. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Johanna and I am with uh, Bell Ray, which is a veterinary technician school in Denver, Colorado. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, there we go. Um, so we are a veterinary technician school uh, located in Denver, Colorado. Um, uh, our sole focus is veterinary um, technology. And a lot of people wonder kind of what the difference between like a veterinarian and a veterinary technician is. So a veterinarian is your doctors. Um, so they're prescribing medication, doing surgery, giving prognosis, um, and then all of the uh, uh, like procedures and different things like that. Veterinary technicians are more similar to the nurses for animals. So we're um, out there, we're on the floor with the animals, taking the x-rays, running anesthesia, um, giving medications, making sure all the treatments are done, um, client communication, um, all kinds of stuff like that. And so that's our sole focus at Bell Ray is to basically create um, quality veterinary uh, nurses. So, um, what we have to offer is we are an associate degree program. So it's a 24 month program. Um, and then we are nationally accredited uh, by the AVMA. Um, and then 
um, we are also able, uh, after you take, I'm sorry, after you complete our course, you are able to take the national exam uh, to become a veterinary technician. So, um, and then you're able to take that with you to whatever state you desire to work in. Um, all of our teachers at Bell Ray are uh, veterinary technicians, they are certified. And then we also have veterinarians as well that you will work with. Um, we have one of the unique things about our campus is we do have over 80 animals on campus. So um, it's very, very hands on. We have everything from our small little um, like rats and mice all the way up to horses and goats. And then we have um, on our offsite labs as well where you can get hands on with surgery um, and then also like cattle and different things like that. So that once you're ready to go out into the field you are completely ready to go. Um, another unique thing about Bell Ray's campus is we have a full on-site clinic. So you'll be doing dentals on your own animals or on the, on the uh, school animals. And then you'll also complete an entire surgery rotation uh, while you are a student at Bell Ray. So, and then for our last quarter, we have over 200 approved veterinary sites all over uh, the United States. So for your last quarter, you go out and you um, basically work a full-time job as an intern um, just to really solidify your, your skills as a veterinary technician. Uh, so then once you are accredited, you can just start working. Um, then we do off, offer a career placement and connections uh, once you're ready to start applying and, and working. So a lot of our students come out uh, with a job or um, have good prospects of, of getting a job pretty quickly. Um, so a few benefits is, as I've mentioned a couple of times, we have quarters. So we're not on the semester system, we are on a quarter system. So we go year round um, and we start every season. So summer, spring, winter, and fall, we have a start date and our um, quarters run 10 weeks and then a week of finals and then you have two weeks off. And that way um, we're a very fast paced course but you get through the material pretty quickly. That way you can get out and start working uh, right away. So no out of state tuition, which is really nice for our students. Uh, we have a lot of students from California and Texas that come to Bell Ray. And so our tuition is the same straight across the board. Um, there won't be um, any jacking and pricings or anything like that if you're coming from out of state. Um, another good thing about the veterinary technician field is it is a growing field. So it's expected to grow 19, um, 19%. Um, so there are basically all that means is there are more jobs than there are veterinary technicians. Um, so before I worked at Bell Ray, I was a veterinary technician um, and worked in the field for several years. So I always tell people if I decided to quit my job here at Bell Ray, I could go get a job tomorrow as a veterinary technician. Um, they're in demand and um, I, there's so many clinics needing technician and the skilled um, and the skills that they have to offer. This is just kind of an outline of how our, our uh, school works. So again, I already mentioned the four start dates a year. So um, you start classes and you have final exams and then you have a break um, and you just do that until you graduate. And these are our classes that we offer. And so they're very hands-on. We do have kind of general education type classes um, and those we will uh, waive if you've taken um, like advanced placement classes in high school or you've done the concurrent enrollment and you've already taken the college courses so you can start um, basically at your second quarter um, where you have like the medical math and veterinary science and with those classes they're very hands-on they do have lab portions of them so for example we have um, hematology which is the study of blood and not only are you studying red blood cells white blood cells and everything that goes along with that there's a lab component so you're learning how to make slides and seeing all um, of the different types of cells. So once you go out into practice, you are ready uh, to go. Uh, we are currently, because of COVID, doing an online. Uh, so some of our classes are online, but we still have the on-campus ability to get that hands-on. And I'm happy to talk with um, you guys more about that if you have more questions. Um, and then what everybody kind of asks is, um, 
you know, tuition and, and your next step. So application is free, so you can go ahead and apply. We do have a full financial aid department. Let me go to that slide really fast. Um, we do have a financial aid department that's happy to answer all of your questions. Our tuition currently is at uh, 32,900. And again, that is broken up into all the different quarters and uh, will not change while you are enrolled at Bell Ray. Um, so thank you for your time. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them and I'll put uh, my contact information in the uh, chat. So you guys are welcome to reach out. Thank you very much, Bell Ray. Um, up next, we will have University of Idaho College of Natural Resources. Hello, everyone. My name is Mindy McAllister, and I'm the Director of Recruitment and Stakeholder Engagement in the College of Natural Resources at the University of Idaho. I go ahead and get my screen shared here. So I'll start with just some general information and then really dig into the College of Natural Resources. Institutionally, the University of Idaho is located in a beautiful rural college town in Moscow, Idaho. Um, we're about an hour and a half from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho in Spokane, Washington, about five hours from Seattle and about six and a half from Boise. Moscow is consistently ranked as and regarded as one of the most beautiful college towns in the nation. It's a great little spot that we've got here. Um, and our students really have access to the arts, sporting events, great restaurants, coffee shops, and festivals, um, and really endless outdoor recreation, which is a lot of what we find in our college. Um, we were founded in 1889, which actually took an act of Congress because that predates Idaho becoming a state. Um, we're also an excellent value. U.S. News and World Report ranked the University of Idaho the number one value in the West and number three among public institutions nationally. So um, even as an out-of-state student, we have really robust scholarship opportunities and you're, you're going to get a really good bang for your buck here. Um, I also like to say that we're a Goldilocks size. We are just shy of 11,000 students, so large enough that you have a lot of opportunities, but small enough that you can really take advantage of them. We are the land grant and research institution for the state of Idaho. About two thirds of our students participate in undergraduate research. Um, we also have a low student to faculty ratio, 16 to one. So you'll get to know your professors quite well for a, a land grant public institution. I also think we have a pretty fun mascot Joe Vandal. So I threw that on there. Go Vandals. As far as the College of Natural Resources goes, um, the College of Natural Resources is ranked among the top in the country. And for the last two years, we've been number one for value. At over 100 years old, we remain a leader in the science of better managing and conserving natural resources. Um, we're also considered a pure play college of natural resources, meaning all of our majors, programs, uh, students, faculty are in one academic college, which really creates a strong environment for learning and allows a lot of interdisciplinary collaboration. Um, it's also increasingly rare. A lot of natural resource programs you'll find embedded in a college of agriculture or a college of science. So it's a pretty cool thing that we're all in one spot. We're also renowned for our hands-on experience. Um, our students learn in some of the most spectacular classrooms in the world, the, the forest, rivers, range, and wilderness of Idaho. Um, when I ask current students what their favorite part of CNR is, it's usually speaking to those hands-on experiences or their relationship with faculty. So I do like to mention our undergraduate population is pretty robust. We've got about 600 students at the undergrad level, but we currently have the largest population of graduate students studying natural resources. And to get strong graduate students, you have to have great faculty. And those are the same faculty that our undergrads are working with. We have some, in, in addition to our strong community and academic quality, our students get experience in some pretty unique places, um, working directly on faculty with projects, field trips, things like that. Um, these college assets or places make us truly special and allow you to graduate with the experience you need to really land your dream job. And that's the goal. So starting with your first semester, all of our majors undertake regular field trips to um, some of these places. We have over 12,000 acres of working forest that is just on the north side of Moscow Mountain, our little mountain range. We've got 10,400 acres of beautiful western rangeland in the Wood River Valley of Idaho. Our McCall Field Campus is located along the shores of Payette Lake, kind of in central Idaho. 
And the only property owned by a university within a designated wilderness, our Taylor Ranch Wilderness Research Station, is located in the central Idaho Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness, which is a lot of words, um, but it is the largest wilderness area in the lower 48. And so we have a full semester program where you can spend the semester learning at that research station. Um, we have one of two commercial forest nurseries in the country um, where our students planted about half a million trees last year and the only indoor wildfire combustion lab owned by a university in the US. Um, I could go on and on about these cool places, but those are just a couple of highlights. Aside from the help of those really unique spots and great faculty, our students are also engaged in clubs, organizations, and even the CNR House, which is a living learning community um, that really helps students gain skills and knowledge outside of the classroom that can, can help in your future careers. A lot of our majors are very in demand um, in the workforce right now, which is also a good thing. Um, and then the CNR house is also a lot of fun on the social side. We also have a number of resources for CNR students, including career services, um, free tutoring, strong professional advising, and some built-in faculty mentorship. Um, we do have three different departments in the college, so I'll run through those quickly. In our Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, our undergraduate majors are ecology and conservation biology, fishery resources, and wildlife resources. In our Department of Natural Resources and Society, we have majors in natural resource conservation and our environmental science program. In our Department of Forest Range and Fire Sciences, we have majors in forest and sustainable products, fire ecology and management, rangeland conservation, and forestry. Just to recap, I think there are a number of things that make our College of Natural Resources really stand out among other natural resource programs, but perhaps our most unique features are the ones that I kind of spelled out here, that really strong value, strength of programs, the strong community that's cultivated here, and then the experience that you really get both inside and outside the classroom. Um, a lot of these places and labs and resources are really unmatched. So um, I hope you got a little glimpse of that. I will throw my contact information in the chat as well, but I would love to hear from you after today if you have any questions. Thank you very much, University of Idaho. Um, moving into the second half of our presentations, up next we have Southern Illinois University College of Agricultural Life and Physical Sciences. All right, thank you very much. My name is Susan Graham. I'm from the College of Agricultural Life and Physical Sciences here at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, Illinois. I'm gonna share my screen quickly. All right, so welcome to SIU. Just to tell you a little bit about us and who we are, we're located in Carbondale, Illinois. So if you know where Chicago is at the top of the state, we are six hours south in the southern part of the state. And our little corner of the world here in Southern Illinois is known as Little Egypt. And our mascot is a Saluki. And that is because the geographical area we live in is very similar to Egypt, uh, especially with the convergence of the Mississippi and the Ohio rivers near the bottom of the state. Our mascot, as I said, is a Saluki, which is an Egyptian running dog known for its incredible intelligence, endurance, and its speed. So we'd love for you to become a part of our Saluki nation. We have no out-of-state tuition. All students in the US pay the same tuition rate. And this is a, a picture of our Saluki, what a Saluki looks like. So I'm on the agricultural side of our, our college, but I am gonna share quickly with you the science side. We do have 10 majors and 24 specializations in the science programs here at SIU, including a lot of undergrad research opportunities and prepare you for health professions for those professional school experiences. My focus is in the agriculture programs. We have six different majors with 24 different specializations. Agribusiness economics, agricultural systems, which includes agricultural education, animal science, and a large portion of our animal science students do come to SIU for our pre-vet program. That pre-vet program has a 98% placement rate into vet school with most students receiving multiple offers. 
We also have forestry. Our forestry program is the second highest degree granting forestry program accredited program in the United States, second to only Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And we feel that our program is very strong because again of our location. We have the Shawnee National Forest in our backyard. Your classroom for the forestry program is the Shawnee National Forest. We also have crop soil and environmental management, which are those traditional row crop and production, crop production majors, and our horticulture program with landscape management, production management, and turf grass. One of the great things about SIU is our farm. It's the highlight of our world here. And we have 2,000 acres of a working farm. 100 acres of that is hay production. We have pasture land, we have row crops. Um, our animals are actually, we have swine, equine, beef. Our students are actually utilize the farms for their classroom. This includes a student run farm. Students actually go out and help us farm and care for our animals at SIU. It also provides numerous opportunities for undergraduate and graduate research as well. We like to make connections. We like to see our students connected here on campus. So here in Ag Sciences, we have our annual RSO fair at the beginning of the semester. All the RSOs go out. It's a great way for students to find community, connect with students with the same interests. We also have Greek life associated with Ag Sciences programs. We have two fraternities, Farmhouse Fraternity, Alpha Gamma Rho, and we have the Sigma Alpha Sorority. SIU is also very involved with athletics and intramural sports, community service. We like to have our students give back to the community. And also we're a diverse campus with multiple intercultural events. We like to provide opportunities for you to be engaged across campus. And again, connecting with other students. We have our new student barbecue. We like to eat here in the Ag Sciences programs. And our students, actually our Smoking Dogs barbecue team will cook for us um, this fall. And we also do a watermelon welcome fest, in addition to several other events. As far as coming back to fall, I will add that SIU is planning to be completely face to face with uh, masking and some distancing still required for the CDC guidelines. But for right now, we complete, plan to be completely face to face. Another great area for SIU is our lakeside living. So students at SIU get to have what we call the sweet life with a single room and a suite mate sharing a bathroom. Um, the photo here you see here is actually the lakeside living. This is one of our living learning communities for Ag Sciences. We currently have two, Stiegel Hall and Boyer. And your view outside your, your room is the lakeside. Very convenient. It's, just across the street from the Ag Sciences building where the majority of your Ag classes are. Some of the great things about SIU as I finish up here um, is our location. We're only about three hours from Nashville, three hours from Memphis, Paducah is a little over an hour and St. Louis an hour. And these are some photos of the things you can see and do at SIU in Carbondale, Illinois with the National Parks, Garden of the Gods, lots of rock climbing. If you enjoy outdoor activities, this is the place for you. Affordability is important. As I said, we have one flat tuition rate. We have scholarship programs, including up to a full ride for four years of our Chancellor Scholars Program and Transfer Scholar Programs as well. We have over 400 scholarship opportunities. So how to join us, you apply online. Um, applications for fall 22 will open June 1st. We're still taking applications for this fall. Um, and we're actually going to begin with the uh, Common App beginning um, August 1st. So you just complete your application, pay your application fee. No ACT or SAT score is required. With that, we'll, my information is in the chat. Please feel free to reach out to us. And we hope to have you join our SIU family. Thank you very much, SIU, College of Agriculture, Life and Physical Sciences. We're gonna stay with SIU now, but we're gonna to move to the College of Mass Communication and Media Arts. Yes, thank you. My name is Rita Medina and I am the Recruitment and Retention Coordinator for the College of Mass Comm and Media Arts. Um, I apologize for my little weird Band-Aid on my face, just want to get that out of the uh, way, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and talk a little bit more about SIU, more on the arts and media side. So um, we have some really exciting changes happening right now, starting at July 1st. Um, I know that uh, Susan talked quite a bit about some other general SIU facts. I'll try to breeze through those fairly quickly. 
So she did talk a little bit about Carbondale. We have about 26,000 residents here in Carbondale. So it's a small town, but it has a, a lot of variety due to the university. Again, we're close to the Shawnee National Forest. When you get to drinking age, you can enjoy the Shawnee Hills Wine Trail due to our wonderful and bountiful agricultural life down here. A vibrant art, music, and theater community that extends outside of the campus, but definitely is due in part to um, what the campus fosters in those areas as well. In 2017, we were at the crossroads of the really big uh, total solar eclipse that happened, and it's going to happen again for us in 2024. So some of you students who will, may be starting soon will get to experience that in April of 2024. There's another shot of our beautiful Saluki. We have a 14 to 1 student to faculty ratio here at SIU, so you have get a lot of one on one attention for sure. We offer over 200 different programs, so that's for the whole university. So maybe arts and media is not your home, maybe agriculture is not your home. Chances are we have what you're looking for here at SIU. We're among the top 5% of all US higher ed research institutions. So what that means is our faculty are continually doing research in their areas of study. And that also means that students are welcome to come in and help them with those areas, whether it's in a research lab or helping to produce a new textbook or doing some hands-on work on a cinema piece. Um, even as early as your freshman year, you are encouraged to participate in that research. We also have graduate school programs here, our School of Law right on campus, and our School of Medicine starts at SIU here as well. Um, and then their final two years are completed in Springfield. As Susan mentioned earlier as well, we do offer in-state tuition for all domestic students. Truth in tuition means that your tuition rate will be locked in for four years from when you begin. So you know exactly what you'll be paying for the next four years of your time here at SIU. SIU also offers more than $10 million in scholarships and grants annually. So that's coming from the state, coming from federal government, but also coming from SIU's institution itself. More than 90% of our students receive some form of financial assistance. So I hinted at some big changes happening. Um, I currently am part of the College of Mass Communication Media Arts, which includes Department of Cinema Photography, Department of Radio, Television, and Digital Media, and the School of Journalism. But we are joining forces with some other programs all across campus here. Starting July 1, we will be the College of Arts and Media. And we're very excited about that because a lot of our students already cross over into a lot of these disciplines or double major or will major and minor in one or the other. So I'll begin by talking a little bit about each school. So this, in the School of Architecture, that's gonna include in architectural studies, fashion design and merchandising, and interior design. In the School of Art and Design, you'll see there's several different ways you can specialize your interests from education to history, ceramics, we have metal smithing, which is a very unique uh, thing here to SIU, painting, printmaking, sculpture, and also photography has recently moved into the School of Art and Design as well. In the School of Media Arts, so our cinema and RTD programs are also joining forces beginning July 1. You can see there's a lot of different ways to specialize in the world of cinema, television, radio, any kind of digital arts or media. So that could include animation, it could include um, virtual reality or augmented reality. We have students working with all kinds of internet type media. And what, what does that look like in the future of uh, technology as technology changes and advances? Um, I would also like to add that a lot of these programs also encourage not just that practical hands-on side of things, but the history and the studies component so that as technology changes, our students can adapt with that technology and they're really learning how to learn and stay adaptable in um, the industry. Um, I'll also add here that even in the world of media arts, our students can use equipment and get their hands on equipment from day one. You do not have to wait until maybe a junior year or after you pass a certain class or level. In the School of Journalism, that's going to include more traditional news editorial, but also advertising. So if you're someone who's interested in marketing, but maybe you want to do something more creative and less math focused, advertising might be the work, uh, the area for you. We also include photojournalism, sports media, and we have a fully online program. In the School of Music, we also include music education, theory, composition, performance, music business. This is where I'll also add in in all of these areas that are groups, uh, ensembles, things like that. Students from all majors are welcome to come and participate. So in things like our Saluki Marching Band. Musical theater and theater. So that's gonna include the musical theater BFA, but also the BA, which can help you specialize in other areas like maybe uh, costume design and production, playwriting, any kind of technical elements in the world of theater. 
So I wanna end off by encouraging you to follow us on social media, on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We post a lot of what's happening with our students today so you can see the kinds of contests they're entering, their accomplishments, the awards they're winning. And then on YouTube and Vimeo, we also um, are post a lot of our video examples of what our students are doing, but also what our faculty are doing. We've also had some pre-recorded, or I'm just say recorded um, experiences that we've been able to keep in our records for the year that we've been in our COVID restrictions. So even as a student who's far away from us, you can see what some of the lectures and some of the uh, conversations have been like for students here on campus. Thank you. Thank you very much, SIU College of Mass Communication and Media Arts. Um, now we're gonna move into our final presentation for this session coming from Marshall University School of Pharmacy. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Thompson and I'm the recruitment specialist here at Marshall University School of Pharmacy. We are located in Huntington, West Virginia. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay. So just a little bit about our program. So we do have an early assurance scholars program. So um, this is for high school seniors and how it works is you would attend Marshall as a freshman straight out of high school. This is the two year max program of prerequisite classes that you would complete because for pharmacy school, you don't need to have a bachelor's degree. You would only need to have all of these credits, which is right around 55 credit hours. Um, so a little bit about our program. We are a four-year doctoral level degree program. So your first through third years, you are in the classroom doing the didactic coursework, as well as doing some clinical site rotations. And then your fourth year of the program, you're on what we call your IP rotations, which is your advanced pharmacy practice experience rotations that are done. And you can do those um, basically anywhere you want. We have over 500 sites nationwide. Uh, we do have some international sites as well. In our program, you earn three certifications. So you earn immunization certification, you earn your diabetes management and then medication therapy management. Um, you know, our students earn their immunizations our first year and they've been vaccinating. Um, here in West Virginia, we are, you know, one of the top states for the COVID vaccine. And, you know, a lot of that is our students, they've really worked hard to get out and vaccinate the community. So just a little bit about our program, if you were to do the early assurance, which is our two, two year pathway, so it's more of like a two plus four program, um, you get free access to the pre-pharmacy club that we have here at the university that's ran by our students. Um, you also get access to a, a pharmacy faculty member who can serve as your mentor, so you know that you'll meet with. Um, so just some things, um, visit if you are um, maybe not local or, or interested in our program, please just, you know, check us out. Send us an email at pharmacy at marshall.edu. Give us a call. We are doing virtual visits, so we're doing those. We also have a virtual tour platform that you can check out on our Facebook. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, I am in the office and I would be happy to meet with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marshall School of Pharmacy. Um, and thank you to all of our panelists today for the great overviews of your schools. Uh, we do have some time remaining. So attendees, if you have any additional questions, please do feel free to send them through via the Q&A feature. While we're waiting to see what questions our attendees have, perhaps we can do a round of questions here ourselves. So if I could ask all of our panelists to turn their videos back on. Um, and I would pose the following question to you. Six minutes is not very long to give an overview of your school, uh, just enough to give a taste. Uh, so my question is this, what is one thing you did not have time to include in your presentation that you'd like to quickly cover now? Maybe that's your favorite event or tradition on campus, a fun fact about your school, upcoming virtual event, et cetera. Uh, so we can go around in that same order. So let's start with the new school. I would say definitely student work. I mean, there's just so much student work that I could have shown as far as the projects within our graphic design programs and interactive media and just great things that we've done in the community, uh, doing things with uh, San Diego Friends of Architecture and also working with community groups. So I would say that would be the, the biggest one that I wasn't able to show. 
Yeah, that's probably a session upon itself. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Bell Ray? Um, yeah, so um, but I, just additionally, what I'd like to share is that um, we do work closely with um, the Aurora Animal Shelter and the Denver Dumb Friends League. And so, um, again, like I mentioned in the presentation, there's so much hands-on and there's just a lot of different opportunities as far as um, what you can do to become a veterinary technician and with our partners um, locally uh, just to get out there and, and really serve the community as well. Great, thank you. Uh, University of Idaho. Yeah, so something I'm excited about, we are just about complete with a new basketball arena, but it is very unique in that it is a mass timber facility. So it will be the largest mass timber facility of its kind in the country. And our students have had a hand in actually building it. Um, we have students on the experimental forest that we own that are harvesting lumber, sending it to a partner um, mill at another location in Idaho, who then sends it to a, a, a specialty mill to make the mass timber beams, and then it comes back to campus and gets put into the arena. So um, just kind of a fun thing. It's been really neat to watch from the ground up, and our students have had a huge part in that. Great. Thank you. Uh, SIU Agricultural Life and Physical Sciences. Yes, so one of the things I didn't probably hit on that as much as I would love to is, and Rita alluded to this, is the, are the research opportunities for our undergraduate students. You don't have to wait for a graduate program. Um, you can be in a lab, have your own project, even present a poster at a, comp a national conference. Um, we had one young lady who in crop soil was presenting her sophomore year, and I believe she had a paper and a poster session before she left us. So, and those opportunities aren't limited to a lab. They can be done out at the farms where our students run our most up-to-date John Deere technology that we just received last week and have more coming. Um, so it provides a lot of opportunities for hands-on experience for students. Great, thank you. Uh, SIU Mass Communication and Media Arts. You're on, you're on mute there. Rita, you're on mute. Sorry, thank you. I wanted to share my screen about a uh, new student retreat. So we have orientation, but we also, because of our, nation, our Shawnee National Forest here, also have a partnership with our um, uh, Touch of Nature Environmental Center, where we have a new student retreat for new freshmen and new transfers every summer. So it's kind of a way to start getting oriented to campus, start yeah, bonding and meeting new students. Um, I also wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the affordability of SIU. So this is something that, of course, we can talk to you a little bit more about in person, one on one. But we are a very affordable university. Um, this gives you a kind of a glimpse of what the costs look like and how they're broken down throughout the year. Great, thank you. And Marshall University School of Pharmacy. Uh, something that I did forget to mention was research opportunity. So as a student here at at Marshall University, even in undergrad, by taking your prerequisite classes, you can do research with some of the faculty here at the School of Pharmacy. Um, then once you are a student here at the School of Pharmacy, being in the PharmD program, you also can start researching your first year of pharmacy school. Um, so if you're interested in research, I encourage you to go to our website, marshall.edu backslash pharmacy, and click on our research tab, and you can see all the different areas of research that our faculty currently have ongoing. Great, thank you. Um, and again, I want to thank all of our panelists uh, for joining us today. Uh, I know uh, I found your presentations very interesting, so hopefully the attendees also had their interest peaked. Your next step, uh, attendees, is to peruse their websites a little bit more and reach out to all these great people to get more information about their schools. I'm sure all of them would be happy to continue the conversation with you. Um, but this brings us to the end of our session. Uh, so we certainly want to thank all of our attendees for joining us, spending some time to learn about these institutions today. Uh, before we do wrap up this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. When you close this window, you will, will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask you to take a minute and complete. There is one other block of sessions today. So if you haven't signed up for that, please do feel free to do so. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again to everybody and to all of our students. Good luck in your college search. Have a great day. <laughs>